Hello again. Welcome back to Drawing with Mr. Kane. And I'm Mr. Kane, and it's good to see you again. Um, every class I do uh, in a classroom, uh, I kind of ask the kids what they would like to learn, and I'm not so much worried about what I'm drawing as the things that I'm trying to have people learn when I'm drawing, like shadows and the way light works and the way color works. So today I think uh, we're going to do one where uh, we have a sailboat, so we don't have to worry a lot about um, different shadows and shapes. Uh, but what we want to talk about a little bit is composition. Um, so if I have the middle of the paper, right, so if this half are water and this half are sky, it would feel a little bit um, too perfect. So when you're making a composition, you think about what would be pleasing to see with the eye. And sometimes if you're, if I was drawing a picture of waves, I would put, I would put the water line right about here, the horizon, where the sky and, and the earth meet. Um, but today I'm doing a sailboat, so I want to put the uh, water down in the lower half so that the sail can be up high. Um, I could, of course, do some little tiny sailboats, but I think we want to do a big one just so we can have practice here. So what I'm first going to do is I'm going to, is I'm going to try to find, um, well, first where I'm going to do my picture. And if you've watched some of my pictures before, you know that what I like you to do is to figure out how much space you can fill in the time that you have. So if, you, if you're not going to take uh, a long time, if you work slow, you might want to fold the paper in half so that you have more paper to work with afterwards. Um, I'm drawing big so you can see it. So first I want to figure out um, a line on both sides so I can kind of know that my line's going to go straight across. And I'm just going to put a little bit of the way in on each side. And that's going to be where my water is. Now my sailboat is, if you're out in a sailboat, it's going to be windy. So it's going to be tilting a little bit like this. So this is the mast, and attached to the mast is my sail. And it's, a, it's kind of got a curvy line, and you can see I'm, I'm doing it kind of light. And maybe I'll make it a little bit darker so you can see it. I tend to draw very light and then um, go back and draw everything a second time so it's darker, and that way I can also fix my mistakes. Now the back of the sailboat, and then the shape of the sailboat, and maybe I'll put a sailboat way off here, a little bit further away. So it's the same shape that I'm doing, but I'm going to be a little more sketchy when I put it in. Now I can finish my horizon line, and it stops right where I go to the mast. And some sails both have another little sail in the front here. So let, let's start by um, uh, let's start by putting in kind of a uh, just some colors across. I'm gonna I'm just gonna put a little bit of yellow in here. And then I'm going to go right over the top of that with some pink. So either of these sailboats are sailing just as it's getting uh, dark out or light out. And it's probably hard for you to see this pink going in there, across there. And I think what I'm going to use that for is to show where the bottoms of my clouds are. So, and if you heard that noise, that's me dropping my pencil. See how I slide out of my hands. So whatever color we just dropped is probably not going to make it into this picture. So you, you can see that I'm making my lines pretty fast. You don't have to go as fast as I go. I just like to get en enough done so that you can figure out how to finish the picture yourself. 
And you see my clouds are getting a little more off in the distance here. And I'm going right over the top of the pink with my blue, stopping, of course, when I hit my sail. And this might be a good time for me to think about what color I want for my uh, boat. And I think this one way off over here, I'm going to make red. I might even put a little red flag at the top of it. And the mast will be red. And the back of the boat is so it's curved a little bit like this because that's the shape of the boat. You see right here, the shape of the boat is easier to see at the back. And if you know more about boats than I do, then you'll know better how to draw them. I just like to draw. And this one, this boat will be a little bit purple. And see when I go like right here, I'm making a little bit of a, a bump for my wave as it plows into the uh, as my boat plows into the water. Now, even in the background, I'm going to want to have another row of clouds across there. And they're farther away, so they're smaller. Try to be really careful not to uh, run into my uh, white part of my sails here with my coloring. And I, I do areas straight across because it, um, when I'm working with colored pencils and I'm not, not blending it really smooth, um, I like to have a different waves of, of changes in the sky so that it feels like it's uh, going further away. Like right up on the top here, I'm making big strokes. The clouds are usually kind of flat on the bottom. They go up a little bit. These, and if they were wispy clouds, we would be drawing, we would maybe draw our lines at a slight angle like this too and make them kind of swoop up a little bit. But that's really up to you whether you want nice fluffy quiet clouds that are like big ships floating across the sky or whether you want them to be kind of running with the wind. And you see I had that little bit of color in there in the sky and that's just because I like to have I like to in my for my background. I like to have a feeling of uh, of color. Maybe I'll try a little bit of purple in there. Uh, I often use purple to kind of shape the bottoms of my clouds because that's where you know, the moisture part of the cloud is. Think of it as like if you ever saw steam coming out of a steam kettle, it kind of floats up. Although the water part is the heaviest part, and that's that's true with clouds too. The, the part of the cloud that goes way up into the sky is the steamy part. And the part that is on the bottom is more watery. So now I've got my kind of my background in here and after I'm done you can keep on you can keep going and uh, blending your sky together. If you're using uh, pencils that are also uh, watercolor pencils, it'll say right on your pencil, it'll say aqua. Um, then you could take a paintbrush and wet it and then kind of blend these areas so they're all nice and smooth. I don't use the aqua ones because a lot of times when I'm drawing, my hand's rubbing the paper and I, and I don't want to smear it as much. So down here when we get to the horizon, I want to maybe um, 
Usually it's the color where they meet together on a, on some days it's, um, it's almost the same color. You can kind of feel it when you're looking out at the lake. The sky almost changes right into the color of the, the water. Other days when, depending on where the sun is, it's almost silver in the background and really dark blue up top. So we're going to use a little bit of a green, really light green across there. And then I have a light purple and you could use a light blue if you want and just mix it right on top and leave a little bit of white because, you know, waves have white on them. And the green and the silver together uh, start to make a kind of a silvery color. If you want to make gray, uh, purple and uh, green work really well together. Now, as it gets closer to me, I'm seeing more reflection into the water of the sky, so it's getting bluer. And remember right here, we have this wave coming. So if I have little lines across the paper at the top, that'll make it seem farther away. If, I, if my areas are bigger down here, And as they get closer to, I'm going to want them to go feel like they're kind of going up and down. And I'm leaving white between them because a lot of times you'll see on waves. You'll see white tops on the waves and so see like right here. I left this feeling right here. Now my boat, I just kind of drew that in, but I want to, I want to go back in and I'm going to use two colors. I, it's a kind of a, I'm thinking my boat's kind of purple on the side and kind of white on the top there. Um, so I've used red. Even though I told you it was purple, but I used the red first so I can go over the top of it with my purple. And that gives me two different colors. It gives me a, what we call depth. Depth means it, it, it uh, makes it feel uh, more substantial. So when we're talking about, when somebody says 3D, that means three dimensions and that's height, how tall it is. And then there's width, that's how wide it is. And then there's uh, depth, deep, how deep it is. Height, wide, depth. So this right here would be how wide it is. It's the depth of my boat. And I'm gonna go, I'm just drawing a little line all the way around here. See, I left a little bit of white there. And if I'm trying to make the back look different, then I'm gonna make that a little bit darker right at that line because the sun it's coming and if I have a little bit of sun uh, light up in the sky I might want to add a little bit of orange in my boat now in the water right next to the boat you see it's like riding in the water but I need to I need to put a little bit of shadow right next to the boat to the to, to make it sit right in the water so I'm making it dark right there and see I'm making it dark right there and then I'm going to take the color of the boat and I'm going to put a little bit of that on the water but I'm kind of doing it kind of squiggly coming off of it like that so it gives me a reflection of the boat now back over here this boat's pretty far away so it's hard to see but I'm going to put a nice I'm going to put a little bit of blue right next to the boat and then just a little teeny tiny bit of red in the water. Now that, and let's see, <coughs> oh, excuse me. So this is my mast where it goes down to the boat and this is my sail. And mostly with your sail, you don't have to draw the shape in because you want to have it defined by the sky that's behind it. Now, 
that kind of gives us a nice feel and you might want to now add that we've got it laid out you might want to spend your time going back and drawing everything again right on top so you're making it everything a little bit darker you see how when I do this and I can also choose to push harder or lighter and when I do that I can kind of as I'm going across I can kind of think about how my clouds are feeling up there and I can maybe if I'm trying to make these feel round I can shade them really lightly in a little bit and like I say over here it feels like the clouds are kind of wisping up into the sky And then the darkest part is on the top and then again on the bottom. And what I like to do in the end is I like to take a, um, like if I have blue, I could use white or light blue over the top. And I'm just, what I'm kind of burnishing it together by taking a light color and going over the top of it and kind of blending it in. Here I'm just using my light purple Kind of changes it a little bit uh, from if it was blue. And there, I think, I think I can leave you right about there so you can figure out the rest now. If you, over here I put a little flag on top of the boat. I might do that here too. It's really up to you because it is, it is your picture. And you should decide the colors that you want to use. And um, the most important thing is that little bit of shadow around the boat because that's what makes it feel like it's in that place. And a little bit of the boat color in the water because if there's light, the light's going to hit something and it's going to uh, reflect. Even if you were drawing like an apple on a tabletop, a little bit of the light hitting the apple would bounce back and hit the tabletop. So you'd have a little bit of rosy redness, unless you have a green apple. Well, thank you for joining me again. I hope this one was useful to you.